What's good, everybody? In my video today, we're going over the EOC review, and I'm going to drop some very helpful gems for you all. So our first problem asks us, which of the following is equivalent, and they give us two binomials. First thing we need to know is that when we're multiplying two binomials, our answer will always be a trinomial, unless it's a difference of two squares. So A and B are gone. Now, I'm starting to pay attention to my signs because I noticed that 16, one's positive, one's negative. But when I multiply my constant, I know that that, 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 that last term is going to be a negative 16. So our answer should be D. But if we don't do it that way, guys, we can just FOIL, meaning I can multiply 3x by both of these terms and then go back and do the same thing with negative 8. So once we do, we'll get 12x This is what we're going to get. We clean up these two terms in the middle because they're like terms and we should have 12x squared minus 26x minus 16 as our final answer. Hope this was very helpful for you guys. Let's go on to problem number 2. We're working with polynomials. And we're not solving anything, but they're asking us to identify some key things. So number one, they ask us to write this polynomial in standard form. Just remember, standard form starts with the highest exponent and goes down in order. It doesn't go by the constant. It goes by the exponent. So our answer for standard form will be 8x to the 7 plus 5x to the 4th minus 17x to the 3rd. And if you look at our exponents, we started from the greatest exponent and we're going in order from greatest to leadest. Now, the degree of the polynomial, what they're asking us for is, hey, what is the highest exponent? And when we look here, we just have one variable, x to the seventh, so we know our degree is seven. Now, if there was another variable like y, we would have to add those exponents up and then our degree would be eight. But I'll show you guys that in a different problem. So here, we're back at this problem, and they say, how many terms? So just remember, terms are separated by operation symbols. So we have one term, two terms, three. And the correct word would be a trinomial, right? Because it has three terms. Now, the bread and butter of classifying polynomials comes down to these last two questions. So the first one asks us, what is the leading term? So the leading term is just a term that has the highest exponent. And if you write it in standard form, you already know. So our leading term would be 8x to the 7th. And the trick part is students will then take this and rewrite it for the lead coefficient. But just remember that a coefficient is the number in front of the variable. So the leading coefficient is going to just be the number in front of the leading term. So our leading coefficient would be eight. So now we're on to our second polynomial problem, guys, and I really want to show you guys this trick. So when we have other, other variables, even though there is not an exponent, guys, understand that it has a power of one. So if I'm asking you for the degree of this polynomial, which really is a monomial because it's one term, we would just add these exponents up and our final answer for the degree would be six. Now when we go back to eight X to the seventh, right? Degree is seven. But if I add one more variable, now this degree is going to be eight. So just please make sure you guys understand that concept when they're asking you for the degree of a polynomial. So we're moving on to radicals now, guys, and they're asking us to simplify this expression. But I want to show you guys a very a simple way to do this. So what students will do is they'll go through and multiply and get a large number, then try to simplify. But I don't think this is the best method, guys. Let's try something a little bit more simpler instead. So what we can do, let's try to break these down, right? So we're going to have radical 25 times 3. Square root comes out. We have 5 radical 3. And then once we go to our second radical, we are going to have 9 times 3. Perfect square 9 comes out. 
Now we're left with three radical three. See, this is the trick right here. A lot of students are going to think that we just multiply the coefficients. That's not true, right? We're going to multiply the coefficients and get 15. And we're also going to multiply the radicals because they do have the same root. So we're going to get 15 radical 9. When we simplify, which we have to, we're going to get 15 times 3. And our final answer is going to be 45. So please, guys, I know when we're adding radicals, the radicals say the same when we add just the coefficients. But this is multiplying. So we're going to multiply coefficients with coefficients and then radicals with radicals and then simplify the radical if possible. Now we're dealing with triangles and trying to find the angles associated with it. So first rule we have to understand is how many degrees are in a triangle? And we are exactly correct. It's going to be 180 degrees. Now that we know that, guys, we are just going to create an equation and solve. So to create this equation, we're going to add all three of these angles, and it's going to equal 180 degrees. So this is how our setup should look like. So after we set this problem up now, we're now going to combine our like terms. We're going to get 11x minus 7 is equal to 180. And this is turning into a regular equation. So we get x by itself by moving 7. And our final answer would be 11x is equal to 187. Now we're going to divide by 11. Once we do, we're going to get x is equal to 17. But, 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 remember guys, that's just the value of x. We now have to plug x in and determine exactly what the angle is. So please do not forget this crucial step, okay? So let's do that real quick. So when we plug 17 up here, we're going to have 17 minus 1. So we know this top angle is 16 degrees. Now there's two ways we could go ahead and find the angle for these two. We could plug it in, right? 5 times 17 minus 3. Take out my calculator for today. Let's see. We're going to get 85 minus 3. So we know that these two angles are both going to be 82 degrees. But let's just say you didn't take that route. What we could do is just take 180 and subtract 16 from it, right? 180 minus 16. We're going to get 164. And then once we divide 164 by 2, we're going to get 82 degrees for both of those angles. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Let's go on to our next problem. But before I go to this next problem, if you enjoyed this video so far, when I said you smash the like button for us and subscribe to the channel, really helps with getting our video out to more people. So this problem asks us, what is y is equal to negative 2 over 3x plus 5 in standard form? First, we got to know what standard form is. So it's just an equation, ax plus by is equal to c. So we're basically trying to get this constant by itself and have x and y on the same side. So how can we do that? So I'm going to show you guys what not to do. Well, you know, matter of fact, no. Let's just go straight to it. So there's two ways to do this, guys. We can add 2 over 3 on both sides. So we'll have 2 over 3, x plus y is equal to 5. Then from here, we could get rid of our fraction by multiplying by the denominator. So when I multiply by the denominator, 2 over 3x changes to 2x, y changes into 3y, and 5 changes into 15. And lo and behold, we have our standard form equation, and our answer is going to be c. But what I want to do before we go on to the next problem, let's just back up some and let's see if there's another way we could do this problem. And there definitely is. So let's say we didn't add 2 over 3 first. 
we're going to go ahead and get rid of the fraction first. So let's throw, start back over. So if we originally multiply by the denominator, this is what we would have. We would have 3y is equal to 2, negative 2x, I'm sorry, negative 2x plus 15. So we got rid of the fraction from the first step. And now all we have to do is add 2x on both sides, and we would get the same exact answer. So we're on the final problem of our EOC review today. And like I said, hope you guys have been enjoying this problem. So they're asking us for the solution. And I just want you guys to see how they switch the variables around. Please make sure you guys pay attention so you don't confuse your coordinates for your x and y in the answer. So when we're here, guys, rule number one, if the variables are already lined up, don't manipulate it or change things around. We're going to just eliminate x because that's the easiest step for us. So we're going to have 4y is equal to 20. Once we divide, we're going to get y is equal to 5. So now just remember, right, the only answer where y is positive 5 is a. So just by solving, we already figured out our answer, but they wanted you guys to think that this was the x coordinate, right? They wanted to switch, um, confuse it with b. So please be mindful of that, okay? So now we're going to go back and we're going to solve. We're going to plug y in for 5. So we say that 5 plus 2x is equal to 9. Now right? we're going to solve like a regular equation. 2x is equal to 4. Once we divide by 2, we know our x coordinate is going to be equal to 2. So we double check to make sure that our answer is correct. Hope you guys have enjoyed this EOC review today with us. Smash the like button on your way out for us. And thank you guys for joining again with Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.